Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today we will be doing a Ginger Book Bites cover for Foul is Fair by Hannah Kappen. <laughs> I am so excited to film this review because if you saw my March wrap up, you would know that I read this book in March and I absolutely fell in love with it. And as soon as I read it, I knew that I wanted to do some sort of review for it. So here we are. If you are new to my channel and my style of reviews, I like to do a makeup look based on the cover of the book while I give a review of said book. Foul is Fair is a Macbeth retelling with a twist of Heathers and Kill Bill. It's very Quentin Tarantino-esque in its storytelling and its kind of aesthetics and tone. This book follows Jade, our main character, as she was drugged and assaulted at a party during her 16th birthday, and after that her and her coven of friends are then going to take revenge and enact revenge on all of the boys that were involved in her assault. So so this book basically takes place in a two week time frame of Jay literally murdering a bunch of rapists and horrible teenage boys. I read slash listened to this in a four hour time frame and I finished it at 4 a.m. and it was literally a fever dream of a reading process. As soon as I started it, I could not put it down. I had the audiobook as well as the physical copy with me and I was just so enthralled by this story and because it only takes place in like a two week time frame it was just so quick that paired with the very short chapters it it was just impossible for me to put down. I just could not do it and I didn't. I read it all the way through in one sitting and it was absolutely enthralling, captivating, incredibly cathartic and satisfying to read about. I definitely do want to preface this review saying that this book is not going to be for everybody. The main thing that will be a defining factor for somebody to either like or hate this book is the writing style because it is a very unique writing style that is very reminiscent of a play. The sentences are very short and oftentimes even choppy. Again, it is very fast moving and very much like a play. There isn't a whole lot of background or scenery. It's very much quick to the point and the chapters are very, very short and they're not even categorized as like proper chapters because there will be like page breaks and the page breaks will be the different chapters. If you do not jive with the writing style, that will definitely be a like definitive point in your reading experience. But I will say that if you don't jive with the writing style, I do definitely recommend the audiobook and kind of trying that out because the audiobook is a really great audiobook because the voice actress does such an amazing job at depicting the pure and raw anger of our main character Jade. And I just thought it was so well done. So I definitely do recommend the audiobook if you are interested in reading it that way. Like I said, it's it's very Tarantino-esque. It's extremely campy. That is another thing that maybe you would either really love or not really love so much. It is very overdramatic. You have to suspend your disbelief to read this book. If you cannot suspend your disbelief, guarantee you will not like this story. But if you go in just looking for a campy Jennifer's Body, Kill Bill kind of story about this girl who just murders boys and tries to get revenge for the wrongdoings by them, then you will 
absolutely love this because it's definitely a different take on stories of sexual assault. It's very reminiscent of Sadie where it depicts more of the angry girl side of sexual assault victims. I read one review and I feel like it perfectly described this book and the person said that it was a satirically dark version of the female victim agency and that is a perfectly crafted sentence that I completely agree with and as someone who's first emotion is anger when it comes to topics like these, I felt again that it was so cathartic and satisfying. Those are going to be two words that I use very often in this review simply because it is the absolute best way I can describe this reading process. Nothing is better to me than terrible men getting what they deserve by a fierce, beautifully crafted, sexy as hell, powerful female character. Nothing can top that. And so this book really was everything to me. I have mentioned time and time again that I'm not somebody who likes to read about going through your your mental health in a very healthy and raw way. That is just, I'm just not that kind of girl. I would much rather read a story about sexual assault through the eyes of a murderess, i.e. Sadie or Foulest Fair. That's just how I personally would view it because again, I want it to be satisfying and angry and borderline evil. That's what I want out of stories like this because in a world where victims usually don't get the justice that they deserve. I want that in a fictional book and ha Hannah Kappen gave it to me in full. You know what? I kind of want to wing this out a little bit. Is that even? Probably not, but we'll blend it anyways if it doesn't end up working out. This book is extremely messy and chaotic. Again, you really just need to suspend your disbelief throughout the entire reading process because the things that these girls get away with and do is absolutely, like, it's ridiculous and it would never happen in real life. But because it was so fun and satisfying, I just loved it. I know it doesn't happen in real life. You can look on the news and see that it doesn't happen in real life on a daily basis. So I didn't give a shit that it doesn't happen in real life. I want it to happen in real life. And Hannah Kappen was just like, you know what? We can't endorse murder in reality, so I'm gonna do it in my fictional world, and I loved it for it. If you are one of those people who read a book and feel like you need to apply real life morals to a fictional world, you're probably not gonna like this because, you know, our main character is an evil bitch and she murders people and it's not a healthy coping mechanism. Jade even says in the book like she is not what a victim is supposed to look like because it's not healthy at all. I don't really think that needs to be said but the some of the reviews I have seen of this book are just like murder is bad I can't believe that this book promotes murder and oh my god I cannot believe that this book is just promoting these terrible ideas about women murdering rapists like ah oh, feminism is not like this this is why it gets a bad rep blah 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 ma'am you need to be able to just have fun with something and not go Karen on Hannah Kappen for writing a cathartic and satisfying book for victims. But again, if you are one of those people, probably would also stay away from this because it is very gruesome, very bloody, very evil. Like our main character Jade is probably a lawful evil, true neutral evil character. Like she is not a good person. I don't think I've ever read about a true femme fatale before reading about Jade. She is truly so unapologetically chaotic and evil and she uses her sexuality to her advantage and she truly shows the weaknesses of these boys by using the body that was assaulted 
to her own gain and kind of regaining her power by manipulating them through her feminine will. And it was so fun to read about. I just loved seeing all of these boys get murdered and die and get what they deserved. It was so cathartic. As I've said a billion times, I should have a cathartic word count tab on the corner of this video because that's truly the only word I can use to describe this book. It was so satisfying to watch and see everything come together while simultaneously falling apart. It was so juicy and dramatic and me being someone who has never read Macbeth or really not much Shakespeare to begin with, I felt the drama of it all and I think that Shakespeare would be so proud just the sheer ridiculousness of this book and how far Hannah Kappen went in showing the anger and the hatred and the justice served throughout this entire story. There is also quite a bit of rep in here. I believe that Jade herself is Middle Eastern of some culture. I'm not sure if it does explicitly say. I'm sure it does somewhere. I just didn't have it in my notes. Also, one of the witches in her coven, one of her friends, is trans, and there is also some unrequited sapphic love in this as well. None of it is really at the forefront of the story, so it's it's there, but it's not really like a main focal point of the story, but I still wanted to mention it. I just think this book gives a very interesting aspect into the theme of victim agency and looking at sexual assault and themes about sexual assault in a way that, though it may not be a necessarily healthy depiction or realistic depiction of how one would go through trauma in that way, I think that it will be very satisfying. It's why movies like Kill Bill and Jennifer's Body are such cult classics. One of the core things is just that it is so ridiculous and would never happen in real life and does not happen in real life, so we are kind of seeking out those themes in an overly dramatic fashion to get the satisfaction that we don't receive in real life. I will say that although this was a no-brainer five stars for me, the ending was certainly a bit rushed for my taste and I do wish it was a bit more fleshed out and I also kind of wish that the time frame overall was a little longer. Of course the two week point kind of adds to the campiness and all of that but I wish it kind of took place maybe more over a month span or a two month span. I feel like that would be a little better and not make it as rushed as it was but also I kind of still like the fact that it was just over a two week period because it just adds to the descending chaos of it all. So it's either way, but regardless, the ending was certainly a bit rushed and I do wish it was kind of fleshed out a little more. I also definitely wish we kind of got more of the friend group with the coven because although the friend group is there and the friendship dynamic is there, we are focused so much on Jade and kind of her grappling with her revenge plot and her emotions. It does definitely take away from the friendship dynamic and she doesn't necessarily treat her friends the best all the time. Again, I chalk that up to her not being a great person and being very headstrong and ambitious in her goals. But because I really liked the coven aspect of it, I do wish we got more of that. So that's another thing that I wish I got more of. But other than that, this book was honestly damn near perfect for me. As I transferred all of my tabs from my ebook to my actual physical copy, I literally only used my oh my god bitch I love this so much tabs and my that was so fucking poetic bro I'm screaming tabs. I would say that means it was a pretty fucking great book if you ask me. I honestly love this way more than I did Sadie. Sadie was great and all and I loved it, but if you read Sadie and you wanted even more bloodshed in like a prom queen package, this book is 
so for you. I just will always love reading about hot murderous women. It's a trope I love, it's a kink I love, and I will not be shamed for that fact. With that, I am going to finish off my face, come back, highlight a few of my favorite quotes, and then we will be done. All right, so here is the finished look. I have Femme Fatale Red as Jade wears in her book. So now that my look is finished and I don't have to concentrate on getting this face beat, let's look at some of my favorite passages in Fowlis Fair. So as you can see, I only have two colors in this entire book and those are the tabs that I previously named for you. So I have a ton of options to work with here. There's this one passage where Jade is talking about the power of feminine wills and it says, I don't fall for boys, not at first sight, not dancing close, not ever. I don't believe in love or meant for each other or chemistry, whatever that means. When Summer talks about the look, some oil-eyed 30 year old is giving her from across the club. It's called lust. That's literally it, Jenny told her. Two days before the football player drove off a cliff and I said, exactly, and it's all you. Because it was and she knew it. We all know it. My coven and me and every girl who's ever walked into a room and made every head turn. How to make boys think we want them so then they want us to. How to make them do anything we say. It's power. And we decide it, us girls, if we know anything about anything. I decide who wants me, and I'd never be weak enough to want them back. Never be weak enough to want them for anything more than what they can get me. The night I want, or the answers to the test I didn't study for, because I was running wild with my coven instead. Or the key to ruining all the boys who need ruining. I decide how it ends, every night except one. <sighs> That one. So obviously from that passage, we get her explanation onto how she uses her power and the strength of her power as a woman and using her sexuality to her advantage that was previously taken from her without her permission. There is also this theme in this, this passage and kind of throughout the book of not necessarily girl hate, but there is this entitlement that Jade has and this superiority that Jade has. But again, she's not a good person. And I don't necessarily see it as diminishing other girls who fall in love or anything like that. I see it as just her not getting agency through falling in love, but instead making them fall in love with her, if that makes sense. So yes, it's definitely valid the inter interpretations of people saying that there is kind of this girl on girl hate and this not like other girls trope, but I don't necessarily see it that way. And if I do see it that way, it's just part of Jade's flaws as a character. Because again, she's an evil bitch and she mentions that throughout this entire book. So I'm not at all surprised that she has this superiority complex. There's also this delicious theme when the boys see the coven which is part of the Macbeth retelling aspect and at first they're like oh they're just girls playing a prank on us and throughout the course of the book they start to learn that it's not just girls and this one passage really signifies the start of that. It says they were just girls just messing with Banks and me. Just girls, says the boy with teeth that won't cut. Just girls about Maz and her foot slamming the accelerator all the way into the floor. Hands that know how to fight, nerves that know how to kill. Just girls about Summer's poison lips and Jenny's wish whiplash temper that could destroy anyone before they even knew she was swinging for them. Just girls like me and without me, noble Mac will never even pick up the knife. <gasps> the power that this book has is unmatched and I love it so much. And finally, this is a short little sentence that I just want to leave off of. I could go on forever and ever just quoting this entire book, but this one just says, the girl in the blade stares back with murder in her eyes. I love her. 
and I love her too. Overall summarized thoughts, this is certainly going to be a very divisive book. Not everybody is going to jive with the writing style, the themes, the way the story is told, how the story is told, but for the people that are looking for a cathartic, satisfying, campy, murderous story about this girl who goes on a rampage killing rapists. This book is so incredible. You are going to be gripped from the start. You are not going to be able to put it down and you are going to be so thankful that Hannah Kappen has written and published this story. That is it for this video. If you want to pick up a copy of Foulest Fair for yourself, I will have my Amazon affiliate link down below. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just helps me out in this channel. Let me know down below if you have read Foulest Fair, if you are interested in picking it up after this review. I would love to know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!